we're going to rock on with uh, some um, importing in Mapster WordPress Maps. This is specific to Pro. Uh, I believe we have some other stuff to help you with importing uh, in the basic free version. But if you need to import like a very large file, like probably over 100 features, or if you need to do a bunch of conditional stuff on importing, like set, if you want to set values or set titles, categories, just stuff that you don't really just to make your importing life a little easier, uh, you're going to want the Pro because it's a lot more robust and, and it, it just has a ton more features. And it is a bit, it's more than a bit complicated. It's complex. Uh, and it, you know, you may want to use it in combination with mass editing, but we're going to dig through a couple of the features here today so you kind of get a feel for what's going on um, and how, how to play with it. So here in our settings, the same place, you're going to just go to settings and there's going to be your data importer. You're going to hit that looks all the same so far as the free version. Uh, you can use a GeoJSON, KML, JPX, GPX, or shapefile, and they should all um, just convert. So just to get started, you'll drag your file in here. Uh, one thing we have built in here, and we have it also in the free version, but I, I didn't go over it in that one because I hadn't built it in yet, is that we have a reprojection tool. Uh, so lots of times, if you don't know what reprojection is, basically when you have geographic data, the coordinate system may vary. And for web maps, we need a specific type of coordinate system. And if you put in the wrong one, uh, your maps, it's not going to make any sense because it's not in the right uh, values. So if I drag in one here that has the wrong type of um, projection, uh, the system will try to see if it's wrong and it will tell you, oh, it looks like you're not using that projection read these docs to, to figure out how to use this reprojection tool. I'm not going to get really deep into that. This is very much a specialist kind of thing. Um, you may want to reproject in another, another um, program or whatever, but if you want to use it, you need to go to an external website. You need to know the projection your thing's in. You can enter this thing called a, a proj.4, P-R-O-J.4 string, and then hit try reprojecting. It will re-download it, hopefully in the right projection. Um, but that's just so you know about that. So going back, let's just put in a file that I know is good and we'll check it in there. Okay, so it'll tell you, okay, you have point features in this, uh, it might have line, polygon, how many of them. You can look at an example one just so you can see if it looks like what you're expecting, good. And it'll also tell you a warning if uh, properties are different between different features or if the type of property. So if you know, we have one called title, but sometimes it's a string and sometimes it's a number, it'll tell you that that's a warning. Now on the right hand side, we can give a category. Uh, that's a really useful one. So the whole data set will be assigned this category. So in this case, we'll, we'll make it, um, I don't know, let's make it, um, uh, I already have tons and more test parks, but we'll do that, more test parks. And then depending on what features are available, you can add different conditionals. Now this gets a little crazy, so there's a lot to learn here, so strap in. So we'll add a condition here. Now the idea of a condition is that it's basically, you're telling it, if certain things are true about this feature, then style it certain ways or import it in certain ways. So the rules define what the conditions are. So what it does is on your on whatever you're importing, it'll bring up the properties. So if this is a GeoJSON, it'll bring up um, you know your uh, feature properties. If it's a shape file, same kind of thing, uh, and they're all listed here. So this particular file has a whole bunch of them, like biking, uh, you know, golf, this sort of stuff, and basically. Right now, by default, it's set to all. So every single feature in this um, data set will be imported on this condition. Now, if I set it to like, oh, camping has to be N, then every feature that has the camping set to N, this condition would apply to it. And if I wanted to make another one, I would make another condition. Um, well, it's actually the first one here. Um, I would make another condition where the camping was set to Y. Uh, or I think that's what I did. I think I put camping, whatever. You got the idea that the rules, uh, this is what defines what this condition will actually apply to. So we'll just set this back to all for now and, and make, keep it easy. Now we have something called template. The idea here is that you may already have made uh, rather than having to like manually go through and like add all this information about like what's the style going to look like and all this stuff, you may have already made a point 
uh, or a location over here in, in your maps that looks like what you want these to look like or what you want them to be according to the rules that you set. Uh, and if that's true, you can just enter the ID number of that um, feature. The ID number is found by going to locations, lines, or polygons. Uh, let's just open that up so that you can properly see it. And we will check it out, uh, ignore this error message, best to ignore, and hop in locations and far on the right here you'll see the ID number. So if one of these looks like the one I want, then I'll uh, grab this ID number and stick it in here. So I would just put 7304. Cool. And then all of them will by default take on all the, all the styles. So if you made a label and the label uh, has a certain picture or whatever, it'll they'll all look like that. They'll all take on those styles. Um, so that really speeds it up if you've made if you want to make make one that's the type you want and then uh, just import them all and make them all look like that. That's a really good way to do it. Or make one for each you know uh, condition, so to speak. Now we get into the heavy stuff. We get into properties. So this is actually like you're getting into the guts of our plugin here and you're seeing like the very specific uh, like like fields that each thing has. Now we're on the most complex one here with uh, points, but if we just go to polygons instead, it's a little bit simpler to look at this and not be overwhelmed. We basically have color, opacity, outline color, and some hover effect stuff. Um, so now you can set this. The first one is post title. That's common to every one of them, and that's just so you can easily. So when you come here, you don't have to deal with this 0.6, 0.3, because this is what it'll default imp import the titles as, but it doesn't really help you much to figure out what one you're looking at. So you can, um, instead of having the post title just be whatever, you could select, uh, well, this, again, I'm in polygons, and we don't have polygons, and uh, we'll go back here, add this, okay. Um, if we come back here, we can select name for the post title, right? Because that's on that's one of the properties on the um, data set. We select name, and now every post title will actually take the name. Or I could literally put in like a, a like this is the title, and then every single feature will have this is the title as its title. So that's not super helpful with the post title, but let's say you wanted every single feature to have like a border, like a circle radius of 15. You could just put it in right there instead of um, instead of having to uh, go through them all one by one or mass edit them later. So there's quite a lot here. I'm not going to go through them all. There's just tons and you're, you you kind of have to get deep into the plugin if you really want to use this feature, but for heavy specialists, heavy users, uh, this might be useful. Now for um, pop-up, we have similar things to the properties. It's just another version of that, uh, which is just that every feature has basically two sets of fields. One is its styling properties and the other is its pop-up properties. So here you would set, um, it tries to give you a hint of what the value should be. So for instance, enable pop-up by default is set to zero because zero is false. So you would set this to one if you wanted to turn it to true. That's uh, a little bit tough. To, you know, again, this is really the guts of the plugin, so it's a little hard. I'll, I'll give you some hints on how to more do this, do this a slightly different way if you don't want to get into this stuff. Pop-up style, you'd want to put in the ID of one of the pop-up templates. Again, how would you know that? It's kind of tough. Um, and then there's a bunch of other ones that are a bit easier, like, uh, you know, hover interaction instead of click. In general, I would recommend using mass edit after importing to do the pop-ups because it's much more intuitive uh, than doing it this way. But again, for heavy users, maybe you, maybe this will be useful for you. Um, okay, so we have the rules here. It's applying to all of them. We have the properties setting the name. I think that's all we're going to do for now. And we have our category being set this way. Now, um, when you hit import, uh, it imports in batches of 50 features at a time, and they do take some time because it has to like register all this stuff in the database. So you do have to be a bit patient, but you could import something with probably like 10,000 features. And as long as your server has space and you go and have dinner or something, um, it will run. So we'll hit import and we get our loading and it tells me that I have one condition here. And um, yeah, we'll just give this a little bit of time while it's doing its thing. And it'll come back in batches of 50. And then we'll check out the locations.
Okay, there's the first 50, and now it's doing the last six. Okay, so it, 56 features imported. I can see I had 56. It did 56. Looking good. Now we'll reload here and see if they actually did get imported. Oh, there they are. So uh, we can see right now it's uh, uh, 611. Uh, my thing is at the right. It's like in UTC or something. So 111, whatever. It's just they've just imported, and you can see they all have the name as the title, which is pretty awesome. Now I was saying a little bit about mass editing. You should watch the video on mass editing to see more about that. But if we wanted to set the pop-up, I would recommend importing them in a very basic way like this. Maybe my ideal import flow is to uh, use template and then come in and go to mass edit and select, you know, either the individual features or the category in general, and then make more changes here because it's a bit more intuitive rather than having to use that like input value stuff that uh, is is in this properties and pop-up. This is just kind of like confusing. So that's how you're going to do importing. This is definitely powerful. This is how you superpower something with huge shapefile data or whatever. And I uh, hope you love it. And uh, yeah, get in touch with us again if you run into any problems, something breaks, or if you have a great idea for how to make this uh, even better. Thanks so much.